Welcome to Spreadsheet Geek. This video is a response to a viewer who asked that I add employee efficiency to my optimized manufacturing costs problem presented previously. I've done that and I've added a scrap factor as well and made the problem a little more complex. This is a standalone video you can view alone. Or if you want a simpler version, you can look up my previous Optimized Manufacturing Costs version 1, which I'll link in the description. This video was made using Microsoft Excel 2019. Let's briefly lay out the givens of our problem. We run a manufacturing facility. We produce seven different kinds of widgets, A through G. We've received orders for each one of them in these units of production. We've negotiated these sales prices, which should result in these levels of income for our manufacturing facility. This is just the income side of the equation. Now let's talk about the costs. First, we have material costs. For example, Widget A consumes $2 worth of raw materials. Now that does not factor in any scrap. At $2 each for 6,000 units, we will have a raw materials cost of $12,000 minimum, but we know that's going to be higher when we factor in scrap. This Widget A will take 35 seconds to produce for each unit, and that's regardless of what machine we produce it on. We have seven machines in our manufacturing facility to accomplish these seven jobs. We numbered them one through seven, with one being the oldest from the 1992 model year, and we have a couple of newer machines here that are 2020 models. The older machines are less efficient, the newer machines are much more efficient, and the older machines have setup costs that are higher. This setup cost is a one-time cost per job. If the job spans multiple days, you can just turn the machine off and then start it up again without incurring any additional setup costs. The cost per hour is the operating cost in the machine, and again, the older machines are less efficient, use more electricity and power to operate and give the same output. In our problem, the scrap rate is tied to the machine. And this is something new that I've added from my previous video. The older machines will have a high scrap rate. This machine number one has a 7% scrap rate, meaning seven out of every 100 units it produces end up in the scrap bin for some sort of defect caused in manufacturing. In addition, we have seven employees to complete these jobs with. These employees are paid varying rates per hour and they have varying efficiencies. An important thing to keep in mind regarding these efficiency ratings is that these efficiency ratings affect these cycle times. These cycle times listed here are for a 100% efficient employee. If this employee is 20% less than fully efficient, that will increase the cycle time of this part 20%. Employee efficiency and the scrap rate are the two new elements I've added to this problem. In addition to having seven jobs, seven employees, and seven machines, in the original problem I only had five. I can tell already I'm going to be running out of screen space, so I'll be rolling up my ribbon tabs and commands like this periodically. So these are the givens of our problem, and these tables are, for the most part, just numbers in a cell or words in a cell. There's a few exceptions where I do a simple calculation of quantity times unit cost and so forth. But these are all pretty simple inputs to our problem. One additional constraint I should mention is that we have to use all seven machines and all seven employees to do the seven jobs, and we need to start work on all seven of them immediately. We do not have the option of sending three workers home and using the only four that remain or shutting down machines 
we have a constant inflow of orders and we need to keep up with those so we need to commence work on all seven and complete the jobs as soon as we can. We're going to use Excel Solver to solve this problem and we'll use the basic formula of total manufacturing cost equals materials cost plus labor cost and machine cost which includes both the machine setup cost as well as the operating cost. Now that scrap factor will drive up all three of those costs a little bit. Employee efficiency will only drive up the latter two. So this is how I'm going to lay out my solutions table. These widget jobs will be listed here and these will be the only things in this table that are fixed. All of the other columns of numbers in this table will be up for adjustment by Excel Solver and they're going to be driven by these two columns, employee number and machine number. I'm going to randomly fill in the numbers 1 through 7 in each of these columns. So I've done that now and there's no particular order to it. They're a little bit different, but the numbers 1 through 7 add up to 28, so I just put a check cell in each column. These numbers are going to drive a lot of VLOOKUPs that will fill numbers into these cells for all of my costs, and my total cost will be the sum of, of all these other costs. Now, when I run Excel Solver, I'm going to put constraints on these numbers here. These are going to have to be integers, whole numbers. They're going to have to be between 1 and 7. And they're going to all have to be unique with respect to each other, at least in each column. And as a final constraint, they're going to have to add to 28. So keep that in mind as we move on toward our Excel Solver stage. So let's start with our raw materials cost. This is the easiest one. Raw materials cost for the widgets A through G are listed right here. And this, this is a lookup table. It's not going to move. I've got my basic raw materials cost here before any scrap factor. So let's just list that right here. Basic scrap factor. And then I need to add to that or multiply that actually by a scrap factor which will equal 1 plus this percentage rate. So I'm effectively multiplying my basic scrap factor by 107% or 104% in this case because this is going to be machine number 2. So let's run a VLOOKUP and we'll look up our machine number which is currently occupying this cell machine number two over in this lookup table and we'll return what's in column five and let's fix these references and I forgot my ending parent, but uh, Excel fixed that for me. So that seems like a reasonable answer. We have a machine that is has a 4% scrap rate, so that drove up the $12,000 basic raw materials cost to $12,480. Let's fill in the rest of those, and we've got our first factor raw materials cost completed. Time for a sanity check. You'll notice that these numbers here for widgets A through G, raw materials cost, are all slightly higher than the basic no scrap raw materials cost, reflecting our scrap rate percentages. So that looks like it worked very well so far. So the labor cost will be next. This is a little more complex. First, I'm going to use this formula, and I'll be showing little formulas in between here as I barely have room on my screen, but I'm going to take the cycle time for the widget involved, and I'm going to multiply it by one hour divided by 3,600 seconds. That'll give me hours that it takes to make a widget, and that'll be a very small fraction of an hour but I can at least then multiply that hourly component required for the widget by the employee's basic rate 
and then multiply by the units required uh, in my production order. We're not done yet, but this is the first step. So let's do the first one. This will equal widget A's cycle time. And I'm just going to divide by 3600 seconds, then multiply by a VLOOKUP, where I look up the employee's number in this table. And I'm going to return what's in column three here. And then I'm going to multiply that by the units required, which will be another VLOOKUP where I'm going to look up my widget in this table and return what's in column two. Before I hit the enter button, I'm going to fix these using the F4 key. So I can paste this formula down and let's go ahead and format this with no sense. And we'll paste that one down. So that's my basic labor cost, but I need now to adjust that labor a little bit more, make these numbers all a little bit higher because I'm not taking into account employee efficiency or the scrap rate. What I'm going to do with my formula is essentially turn this entire part of it into the numerator and put in a denominator that equals the efficiency times 100% minus the scrap rate. So there's my new formula and I'm going to fill in this part in blue over here. So we'll put a big set of parents around this whole thing and divide it by a couple of VLOOKUPs. So the first VLOOKUP is going to be looking up the employee number in this table and returning what's in column four. And I'll multiply that by another VLOOKUP. This one's going to be one minus a VLOOKUP of the machine number. Come over here and return what's in column five. As usual, I will fix these references. Let's see how that works. So our number went up from about 1484, I believe it was, to 1599. Let's flip that back for a second and see. So we have a slight increase for scrap, and this is uh, machine number two. So 4% scrap and a 5% loss of efficiency. Let's autofill those down. So now we have captured accurately our labor cost. To make machine costs a little simpler, I broke it into two categories, setup cost and the operating cost. The setup cost is very easy. It's a straight V lookup of one number. We'll just look up the machine number that happens to be occupying this cell at the moment. We'll look that up over here and we need this column three. We'll fix those references. $250 for machine two. Let's autofill those down and that's all taken care of. Neither employee efficiency or the scrap rate have any impact on the setup cost, so that was an easy one. For my machine operating cost, I'm going to use this formula. I'm going to, again, take my cycle time and convert it into hours by multiplying by 1 by divided by 3600, then multiply by the units required up here for each job, and then Multiply that by the machine rate over here. For the cycle time, I can just pull this right down from here since these are in the same order and these are never going to change. Or let's just divide by 3600 multiplied by a VLOOKUP. I need to find for widget A the units required 
in column two. And then I need to multiply that by the machine rate over here. So we'll do another VLOOKUP. And we'll return what's in column four. So that's our basic operating cost before scrap and employee efficiency are taken into account. So here's what I'm going to do with my formula. It's just like with labor cost. I'm going to put parentheses around the whole numerator and then divide by efficiency times one minus scrap rate. So that ends up being the exact same denominator I used in this equation. So I'm just going to borrow it from this, bring it over here, and hopefully I have enough pairs of parentheses to go around. And that looks good. So let's paste that all the way down. Now we have our machine setup cost as well as our machine operating cost which factors in our scrap rate and our efficiency rate. So let's just sum up the total cost of these seven projects. So I summed them up and I cleaned up my worksheet a little bit here. Right now under this scenario with this combination of machines and employees, we've got a total cost of 127K versus 187K of income. We're going to use Excel Solver and Excel Solver is going to jumble around these seven numbers here and these seven numbers here run a number of trials and try to generate the lowest cost here that will maximize our profit and that'll tell us which employee to run on which job and which machine to use for which job. Let's see how that goes. So as a good practice I've highlighted my objective cell in green and I've highlighted my cells with constraints applied to them in this gold color. Make sure you have Excel Solver turned on. Let's see if we do. Under the data menu you should have Solver over here. If you don't, go to the file menu, options, add-ins, and Excel Solver is up here listed. I've got it turned on. It's an Excel add-in. If you don't see it up here and you don't see it on your ribbon, just bring this up and say go to and then check this box and say OK. So I'm going to do a couple things here. One is I'm going to scroll this up because this table with our solution is all I really need to see. I'll tell you what, I'm going to renumber these one through seven just so it's obvious we can see the different solution that solver comes up with and then we need to set up our problem so let's open solver reset all I need to set my objective cell here we're going to go for the minimum. We'll go for the maximum later. Our changing cells will be separated by a comma. So these will change as these will change. And we need to add some constraints. So for these cell references, they need to be less than or equal to 7. We need to add another constraint to those cells. They need to be greater than or equal to 1. Those cells also need to be integers. 
and those same cells need to be different or unique with respect to each other. There's one more constraint. This cell needs to equal 28. I'm going to repeat those exact same constraints for these cells offline. So I've got all my constraints entered now. I've got one set of constraints for these cells and another identical set of constraints for these cells. I've identified my objective. We're going to go for the minimum. I choose the evolutionary uh, method. I've had bad luck with this GRG nonlinear. It just doesn't seem to work for me, but I've heard differing advice on this topic. You definitely don't want the simplex LP for uh, a situation like this with multiple variables. So we'll go with evolutionary. We'll start to solve. And you can see it cranking out the solutions down here. This usually gets up to about 15,000, but I'll check back when it's done. When Solver finishes up, this is a little dialog box you get here, and it says Solver cannot improve the current solution. All constraints are satisfied. You can look at it, 127, 151, and you can say, yes, I will accept that. So that is a, the minimum solution, and I actually ran this about five times, and I got three different answers, but this this answer came up three times and it was the best answer. And, and one thing you'll notice also is that this is all jumbled up now. It is a unique solution of employees paired with machines on particular jobs. So very effective tool. It's basically a Monte Carlo simulation, but you don't get all the outputs and inputs listed in a nice report, and you just get one optimum solution. What I'm going to do now is run Solver again, keep everything the same except check the maximum box to see what the maximum cost that I can generate is, so I can see potentially how many dollars I saved by doing this whole analysis. Let's run that. So Solver just finished up its maximum objective cell and came up with this answer. And in fact, I ran it five times and this was the worst answer. The other four were just slightly better by a $150 or so. So let's plug that in over here and see what the difference is. So potentially we could have saved $3,440 by going through this exercise. I'd say a savings in that range would be well worth the extra time spent to do the analysis and pair up the machines and the workers in this efficient way to minimize costs. With Excel Solver, it's all about how you set up your worksheet and control these changing cells in such a way that you get your objective cell to read properly. I hope you found the content of this video interesting and informative and that it helps you solve your problem. I'd love to hear your comment about any problem you're having difficulty solving with Excel. Maybe I could take a crack at it. Please consider hitting my subscribe button. Thank you for visiting Spreadsheet Geek.